Hello and welcome again to session 10 of American Literature. Today, part 5 of Moby Dick. Today we'll be looking at chapters 48, 71, 73 through 75, and 96. These chapters are a little less deep, uh, perhaps less difficult, less philosophical, right? less loaded with Melville's great meanings. They give us uh, instead that idea of a cracking good wailing story that the early critic uh, liked as opposed to the philosophical thoughts. And so we get, you and I, a better view of this extraordinary act uh, of wailing in the mid-1800s. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, in the first lowering, we see then that these smaller boats, usually three, sometimes four, uh, go after the whale and uh, have to deal with them up close and personal. But as they see the whale, for the first time something happens. A, a new crew of men, the phantoms, for so they seemed, came forth on the deck. And the person uh, who's going to be by its bows was tall and, and swart, that means almost black, and all dressed in black. And this is Fidala. Now he wears a rumpled Chinese jacket of black cotton, uh, but strangely crowning this ebonness was a glistening white plated turban, the living hair braided and coiled round and round upon his head. Um, this, is, this is very eerie. I mean, I have seen it, of course, uh, among Sikhs, uh, a particular subgroup of India, and uh, they, part of their religious observance is, is not cutting their hair. Um, but this sense of the body used as clothing is almost non-human. The Sikh normally wraps uh, his hair in this manner, but then wraps it in a turban. Uh, Melville is, is, is having none of that. He wants something uh, a little more bizarre than the actuality usually is. The other four are tigerish. They're called Filipinos. Uh, and this was a race that, for all Melville's um, desire to be, uh, I think, kind and, and uh, open to all races, was one that he uh, distrusted quite a bit. Uh, perhaps this was a reflection of something before the islands were Catholicized. Now, Ahab's having his own boat crew that are not members of the ship's crew is grossly out of line. Such things just don't happen, they shouldn't happen. It raises all sorts of questions. Uh, again, of usurpation, of, of using the goods of the ship solely for his own purposes. Uh, and, and Fidala is presented, you know, as we move onward, and even here as kind of a spooky character, an evil character, uh, and one who has a kind of prophetic and supernatural knowledge that certainly does not seem to come from a, a benevolent uh, god, uh, or even an approximation uh, of, of the true god as we know him. Indeed, he's far more associated with the devil. 
Now, I think you, you saw, and I hope you enjoyed thoroughly, how each mate has a different style to urge his men to their greatest efforts, right? Uh, Stubb alternates being sort of easy going, you know, pull, pull my fine hearts alive, pull my children, pull my little ones. Why don't you break your backbones, my boys? What is it that you stare at? So he's just always going back and forth between this kind of humorous, genial urging them on, and then this almost vicious, uh, furious way of doing it. As he says, devils are good fellows enough. So it's, it, it, it is fascinating how each of these works with his men. Um, Stubb was one of those odd sorts of humorists whose jollity is sometimes so curiously ambiguous as to put all inferiors on their guard in the matter of obeying them. <laughs> so Stubb seems nice and easy, but in the end, if you don't obey him, you are in huge trouble. Starbuck, uh, in contrast, and as you might expect, is all intensity, but whispered intensity, right? So spring, my men, spring. This, at least, is duty, duty and profit, hand in hand. So his, you know, his, his is intensity, and of course, no one uh, would even think of disobeying <laughs> Starbuck. Uh, he didn't get to be first mate uh, by being soft. But he, he, wisp he mingles his duty and intensity of wanting to kill whales with this sense of duty and profit. Uh, perhaps hiding from himself how much he actually enjoys it all. And, and Flask, of course, ends up standing on the shoulders of Dagu so that he can see, right? Um, and just sort of screaming at his men to, to get going. That, that picture of himself uh, on, on the shoulders of this man who's so much greater than him uh, is, is, is iconic of slavery itself. Now, we have to realize that Dagu offered it to him, um, as, as slaves very often did uh, cooperate in their slavery for many and complex reasons. Um, but I think here it is Dagu offering it because of the mutual effort that they all want to make to kill the whales to, and, and to bring them home as profit. And as Melville says about um, his own, his own uh, sense of Ahab and what he might have said to his crew, he says that it's simply best that Christians do not know what Ahab said to them. Well, they try to get fast, which means you get the harpoon in the whale, and uh, he starts, he starts pulling. Well, Ishmael's...